Hello students. We'll be talking uh, in this module about the aerial photogrammetry, which is the fourth module of advanced surveying subject. So in this module, we'll be talking more about the aerial photogrammetry. What are the application part of this? Uh, how we use this aerial photogrammetry in the present uh, with respect to the present status? What are the uh, different uses of them as well as the in depth? What are the application uh, applications or other how to identify or what to do? Uh, these all aspects will be studying in the aerial photogrammetry model. For example, this is an old technology rather it started from the World War II or even prior to that. But uh, over a time period when the satellite data came into the existence, this has uh, uh, lose its importance as it was a costlier aff uh, affair uh, to take the aerial photograph. But in a, in a recent day, when, since the uh, drones have been uh, developed, since drones have been developed, this has taken up again uh, the boom in this field and this is rather right, right now, the more, it has more application than the uh, satellite data as this will give the localized study with a very high resolution photograph so in a simple way you can say that now we have an image where uh, this image is captured with a drone and you can see that what all is present within this society i'll say okay this is a society we have we have got so many buildings i mean that what are the facilities that we provided if i want to see all these facilities i have to enter into this and then I have to check but here I can use uh, this aerial photograph to check what all is present I, I know that there is a swimming pool there is a court playing court there is a badminton court then there is the volleyball football basketball courts so these are all applications I can see it with the help of remote sensing In not only that I can with a single photograph I can check how many what are the how many story building is buildings are this and same way here based upon the number of uh, windows okay and even to the highest extent i can calculate what is the area of these buildings okay so all things can be possible with the help of remote sensing or i can say with the aerial photogrammetry not only this there are much and much applications i'm just talking about a photograph of a building with this i can am able to retrieve all this data but over a time period if you go into the depth of this you will understand that there are more and more applications of this with respect to the aerial photograph or as, as i said this is an right now or emerging and trending not only this even you can find out the height of these buildings with the help of concept called as the relief displacement this is a concept called as relief dis displacement with that we can identify what is the height of the buildings as well okay so uh, one by one we'll be talking about these aspects in uh, the next few classes uh, just to make you more interesting i would like to show you some of the videos which has been captured uh, with the help of drone and how they are being used in the remote sensing or the aerial photogrammetry Okay, this is the video of uh, our own uh, institute where uh, which has been captured with the help of drone. Now imagine if I want to see my own institute in this fashion, it's not hardly possible. I can by standing in our parking, we can see okay, there is a whole institute, but it is not possible to capture the entire institute in a single look. And uh, that facility has been provided by the, uh, the 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 drone surveying or the aerial surveying uh, in the last module or the last class probably we'll discuss more about how we have used the satellite images or the drone images for understanding or for carrying out the different survey surveys or the uh, the image retrieval how how we created a 3d model of, of our own institute we'll be discussing in the last uh, class probably in the last class of this model okay so this is the polytechnical institute polytechnic institute with this image or the, this video i can uh, uh, probably by taking the images i can uh, uh, calculate what is the area of the ground what are the areas of each building and then uh, how many columns are there how many uh, which are the areas where uh, 
uh, the, even when to the highest extent i can identify where there are the cracks in a building uh, because it's not practically possible to go and retrieve each and every single uh, cracks so that cracks also can be identified with the help of this uh, aerial photogrammetry okay these are the application parts of the aerial photogrammetry uh, okay so with respect to i'm i'm strict i'm i'm sticking to the uh, civil engineering applications of this uh, aerial photogrammetry okay. i can identify where there are cracks where there are dumps uh, there, there are many many concepts can be understood or can be studied this is our own civil engineering department uh, which has been captured with the help of the aerial photograph so let us move to understand how this aerial photogrammetry started so there was a photographer who was very enthusiastic in capturing the uh, the various data so what he tried is he first he tried to uh, move on the he tried to capture the photograph of the area with the help of the uh, balloon okay and he understood that by looking the photograph from, from the top it will be very good we will get the more picturized uh, thing or we will understand uh, ma many many things out of this so he said okay let's use this technology for capturing the areas then furthermore when this concept evolved uh, they said instead of balloon we can take kites with the help of kite you can see this is a camera which has been attached to the kites and big kites will be flying and they'll be taking a more picture because they can go to the higher heights than this air balloons then uh, they wanted something which is a remotely used, especially during the world war uh, they wanted to use this technology in understanding what all is going on in the enemy area so what they did is they attached the camera to the pigeons and they sent these pigeons on uh, to the, uh, the the enemy areas and with the help of this camera they will be able to capture what all instruments were where they are uh, there are bunkers and all this information they can retrieve from the with the help of camera with the photographic proof and these photographs are geo referenced uh, the meaning of geo reference is that they have the lat long lat and longitude latitude and longitude on this uh, area so when they have latitude and longitude it is very easy to determine where there is a the location of this is all information can be retrieved and they made uh, make use of this technology to identify uh, the the enemy hidden places and all this information with the help of pigeons over a you can see this is the bird which uh, which has attached with the camera okay so this camera how it will help is now you can say that this is a camera which has been attached now it will capture whatever is there on this earth whatever is there in this earth it will bit capture and this information can be retrieved so this is how they have used make use of the pigeons later on when the wright brothers identified the uh, the invented the helicopters they said let us attach a camera to the helicopter because the movement of pigeon cannot be in a straight line always cannot be in a straight line it will be in a bit zigzag fashion or it may take a random turn sudden turns and all this so to avoid this they attach a camera to the helicopters and with once they attach the camera to the helicopters they were able to capture the images a sequential images sequential images of the area in a patch patch manner once later on when they say if i say this this is one this is two this is three and this is four then they can attach them and they can make a single image out of it and this will help in order to get the more and more information not only this if i i take uh, this picture i'll take a single picture then i'll attach i'll cover 60 percent or 30 percent of first picture area in this so this is overlapped area same way in the next picture i will do so this is again the overlapped area this third picture i will take this is called overlapped area once i overlap such areas uh, by overlapping i'll get more information and i can see that images are can be converted to the 3d so with uh, uh, the present drone scenario we are doing the same thing that's called as over overlapping concept 
overlapping concept to get a proper information or to get the 3d out of these pictures and this is the reason why we'll get the along with x y component that is lat and long we'll get z component also that is the height of the building and this height of the buildings or the elevation point will also help in order to create a 3d and this 3d will help in order to understand uh, the detailing of the studies will be more with respect to the, the 3d images so now in the present study this is taking a boom out of this areas and now let us see another video uh, which is again shooted with a drone so here we can see that this uh, you can see the clarity of this you can imagine what are the uh, the area how much is the area and all this concept can be understood but my ultimate aim is not to show about the area this image will be probably with uh, respect to the uh, so called uh, fun i can you can use this you can see the beauty of the ocean here you can see the beauty of the ocean and you can see to the what angle how on angles we can capture the videos uh, uh, of the out of the drones okay and you can see the tilt you can see the movement is happening with the help of camera okay you can check this this movement has something to do with there is a some a very good relation or the very beautiful relation with this tilt or the movement of the camera with respect to the aerial photograph based upon this the images are developed and images are classified and not only that the information retrieved out of this varies with what angle the camera has been seated with the uh, varies with what angle the camera has been fitted okay so this was our uh, pretty last uh, year student who got passed out uh, there is one student called as nabil and uh, he has shooted this uh, video on uh, one of the beach in uh, probably in goa they were able to capture this and he has beautifully uh, captured this image you can you can also enjoy the beauty or beauty As I discussed in the previous photographs <clears throat> or the previous slides, that there are different types of photo photographs. Okay. So these different types of photographs will help us uh, in order to understand the coverage of the area. And uh, then the, there are uh, based upon that there are many uh, application parts. So these different applications will see one by one. First, let us see the different types of photographs. Different types of photographs. So, in this, the first one is vertical photograph. First one is vertical photograph. Imagine 
that this is the aircraft which is moving in this direction okay the line along which the aircraft moves line along which the aircraft moves is called as the flight line is called as i'll say this is flight line it's called as a flight line the line along which the aircraft moves is called as the flight line now i have fixed up the camera at this location and this is my prospective projection or the center of the photograph now i'll be imagine this is my photographic plate on which the image will get captured imagine there is a house at the bottom of this area where it has been captured then there is a human being i'll con consider these two things so with respect to the vertical photograph i'll be able to see only this part i'll be able to see only this part while in case of human i'll be able to see only the head i'll be able to see only the hair part but i'll not be able to identify the person i'll not be able to identify the face of the person i'll not be able to see rather because this is completely a prospective vertical projection it's completely prospective vertical projection is as good as you are standing here you are standing here okay this is your position and you are looking exactly at the bottom you are exactly at the bottom this is called as vertical photographs then the next comes called as tilted photographs called as tilted photographs okay so these tilted photographs are imagine this is the flight in which it is moving so this is my flight okay even though it look like a fish but considered this is a flight okay so this is my prospective projection but my photographic plate or the axis is not exactly vertical here it has tilted a bit this is tilted a bit this tilt will be less than 3 degrees this tilt will be less than d degrees in this what will happen this see imagine this will be the tilt for example i'll explain what exactly means with the tilt is this is my imaginary horizontal position with to that there is some angle there is some angle which will get recorded which will get, uh, get recorded this is called as tilt this is called as tilt same thing is happening here but this tilt is not intentional this is this tilt is not intentional this is happened because of the human error maybe because of the moving moving movement of the flight because of the wind directions and all this uh, uh, parameters are responsible for it but what will happen here is now if this is my house this is my house and this here there is a human being who is standing i'll be able to see this part i'll be able to see if there is a window here i'll be able to see that window okay i'll be able to see the human face i'll be able to see the human face also because of the small tilt but what will happen here here the scale at this corner scale at this corner will be same scale at this corner at scale at this corner or throughout the photograph will be same but here the scale will change here the scale will change here because of the because of this tilt the scale will change here okay so this is called as tilted but be clear the tilt should be less than 3 degrees and this tilt is not intentional this tilt is i'll say unintentional tilt this is unintentional tilt. while the third type of photograph is called as the oblique photograph it's called as oblique photograph where imagine this is my aircraft again this is the flight line the windows in which you are sitting and this 
point is my prospective projection downward direction but what i'll be doing is here i'll be giving some tilt i'll be giving some tilt intentionally here my tilt is very intentional i am saying it it is intentional tilt with some purpose i had tilted so what will happen here this is my this is my house this is the human being who was standing now able to see the entire human being now able to see entire building or entire house with this photograph here i'll not be able to find out the height of the human being but here i can find out the height of the human being because of the tilt is bit tilted tilt is bit higher side this tilt can be close to 15 degrees or less than that it can be close to 15 degrees or less than that so this oblique tilt or this is called as oblique photograph has capacity to uh, the rather this has a more application part but what will happen again here here this side of this photograph will be has a different scale this side of the photograph has a different scale because of the tilt because of the tilt so when uh, the similar thing happens uh, that this is a prospective projection we'll talk about this part prospective projection projection principal point and this part in a uh, next few classes but let us understand one more point here that here again when the oblique photograph comes there are two types one is high oblique one is high oblique another is low oblique okay one is high oblique and another is low oblique let us see what exactly man means by the high oblique and low oblique photographs okay so now uh, first let us talk about the high oblique photograph let us talk about the high oblique photograph now imagine this is my aeroplane every time it is changing in shape because of the my poor drawing okay and now my prospective projection is this while other corner of the photograph is this now what will happen with this my angle is bit on the higher side my angle is on the bit higher side now because of this bit higher side angle what is happening is i am able to see my entire building i am able to see the entire person apart from that i am able to see the horizon also i am able to see the horizon also okay this imagine this is the line is called as horizon what do you mean by horizon horizon is a place where the land and the ocean seems to meet at one point land and uh, land and the we can say land okay uh, land and the sky appears to meet at one location that is called as horizon so if i am able to see this horizon it is understood that these are called as high oblique photograph okay and in case in case i am not able to see this horizon i am not able to see this horizon then then it is called as low oblique photograph it is called as low oblique photograph here horizon will not be appeared will not be appeared but but there is a tilt if horizon is not appearing but there is a tilt in the photograph okay so this tilt will help us to understand or i will say uh, again scale point remains here scale is different here scale is different here sometimes here in this location you will not be able to see anything clearly the objects which are present at this location are very clear the object at this location are not at all clear because they are far from your the 
uh, aeroplane they are far from the aeroplane so here the object which are available here they are not very clear the scale of this is very different scale of this is very different for example now if i take this as my image which is which has high angle here you can see there is a you can imagine there are only buildings there are only buildings here and my aeroplane is over here now it is moving in this direction okay the buildings here are very clear but as we go far the buildings size will differ building size will differ at the corner at the last of the photograph you will be able to see only the dots that is because it is tilted that is because it is tilted and because of which the scale will be not same throughout the the image okay that is the, the disadvantage of high oblique photograph while in case of low oblique what will happen the same remains the even the scale is not equal but much of the distortions may not happen much of the distortions may not happen though thus we prefer to go for low oblique photographs we go for the low oblique photographs because as i said this has a bit of 3d perspective it has a 3d perspective because this will can give you the along with x y that is lat long and the z that is elevation source elevation source and if you get the elevation then you can easily identify the heights you can identify the heights and you can create a, uh, the very 3d images very 3d images okay so this is the difference between high and low angle uh, in continuation to this we'll see uh, another part we'll see another part that is how to how this survey will be done just uh, i will give a brief here imagine this is my area which i want to capture this is the area which i want to capture but here the ultimate aim is to create 3d out of it 3d out of it so it is not that ki, uh, a single image of this area is sufficient here what we do we my aeroplane will be or rather now i'll say a drone drone will be moving from this corner it is shifting back again it is moving in this direction it's continuously moves in the, this direction and covers as much as possible photographs it covers as much as the possible photographs then not only this to get the accuracy the flight will be moving in this direction so we cover the each and every component of the building then only with something called as overlapping we'll be doing this with something called as overlapping imagine this is already explained but let me repeat it once again here this overlapping also taking place there will be a continuous successive image will be captured by keeping some portion as the overlap portion so this portion is the overlap portion this portion is overlap portion not only this not only this this is called as the overlap there is something called as side lap also now when the flight is moving in this direction when it turns back when it turns back here the capturing will take place by covering almost 30% of this area almost 30% of this area so every photograph this part will be again repeated this part is also again repeated so this help us in order to get the side lap of the area and this is how a 3d image will be get created this 3d images are again further used for many and many purposes which we'll see in the successive classes where we'll talk more about this you can see this there's a tilt is happening the, the camera is getting tilted it is adjusting itself it is adjusting itself or rather we uh, have a capacity to 
do that with the help of uh, pointers with the help of control we can do the similar thing now this is exactly vertical this is exactly vertical where uh, we are able to capture from the top we are able to see the capture from the top such photographs are called as vertical photographs such photographs are called as vertical photo we can see exactly vertical below now it's shifted now able to see the horizon here we are able to see the horizon this is the horizon this is the horizon where land and ocean seems to be meet at one location this is called as horizon and that horizon is uh, such photographs are called as inclined photographs now again this has become the vertical here there is a center now here there is a center now center of the video camera this is vertical when it tilted either it goes to oblique a little bit tilt also can be called as oblique or where you see the horizon is called as the so called the inclined photographs okay so this is with respect to the images with respect to the images uh, kindly like our videos uh, like subscribe and uh, share uh, videos for uh, more such videos uh, this fourth and fifth model is already uploaded you can check on our uh, youtube channel for uh, those models uh, videos